So for the discussion, I'm going to urge you to raise your hands. I will call on you, um, and then we'll have the, we'll take a few comments. We'll have some of the speakers respond, and then take comments and questions from the audience again. So. Let me know what y'all think and raise your hands high so I could see ya. Thank you. Go ahead. So I, I'm a teacher and uh, there was a couple things that really gave me hope in what I heard from you. And I wanted to share a little bit of information that will bring you hope too. One of the things you talked about how education is key and that teaching our young kids about their roots and where they came from is important. This year at uh, the NEARA we passed a new business item to start incorporating the history of Africa yeah. into our classes. So that was a real plus. Um, the concern is the charter schools. They're coming into Washington. Um, I, when I was in, in uh, when I was in um, Atlanta, I met the president from um, that Rouge and uh, from the local there. And she said that the charter schools are decimating their education system. Yeah. And I don't know how we can start working on that, but that's a huge one that we, we really need to be vigilant and keep an eye on. Because again, education is key. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ramon, when you told your story, teacher me wanted to go to your camp and teach your kids while you were working. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's working to amend the Constitution. If anybody's interested in working with move2amend.org, we're um, going to put an initiative on the ballot next year that says corporations are not people and money is not speech. All that right. plain, that simple, if you're interested to come see me, mm -hmm. I want you to come to my classroom. I want mm -hmm. you to come and tell my kids your experience. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, thank you. Great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I saw some hands. Please keep them up until I recognize you. I did have a comment. Go ahead. Um, regarding charter schools, and it goes back to that whole idea of orientation. When you think about what public schools, when it started, what it was supposed to be, schools for the general public. It's just like public health. In the American society, when you go from we to me, the orientation changes. And so that orientation is that what's good for the group ain't good enough for me. And that goes back to that whole idea of the picking of the pocket. So now, uh, the reason why people are upset against health care, the same as public school, you don't want to have public because that's quote unquote everybody. Mm. And, you know, everything is gourmet, individual for me. And I think with charter schools, it's, it's that false premise, it's that Kool-Aid that we've been drinking, that uh, just like the myth of big government, the best health care is probably Medicaid. The best education is public school, because it's good for everybody. But if you, if you make it so that everybody can't get it, or in order for you to get it, you gotta go outside it, and leave everybody else behind, that orientation devalues the good of the group for that myth that you can get it. That's that whole, that's the part of the thing with capitalism. We can, we can go ahead and, if you work hard, I can succeed. But we don't think about what it takes for, uh, you know, a rising tide should raise all boats. But everybody's thinking about my boat. And that's what's happened with uh, uh, the myth of public education and 
the, the downfall is, is when you take the money out of the group to sponsor the few, who's going to advocate for those who are left behind? And that's the big myth of uh, the whole charter school, because still it's only going to be skimming off the top, and everybody else is left, and then there's going to be few resources for everybody. And so it's orientation, orientation, orientation. <laughs> Yellow t-shirt, yeah. Uh, yeah, Kevin, and the other part of the rising tide raises all boats. It's okay if you have a boat. Yeah. yeah. It's okay if you have a boat, huh? <laughs> Not every guy, everybody uh, got a boat. My it says, choose the best answer. A, teacher with a master's degree. B, computer nerd with no degree. Bill Gates, get out of my classroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. striped or horizontal shirt. <laughs> Women in the green and the the guy in the uh, front here. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, I just um, I had two things. Miriam was translating the back of high school student. She had to leave to pick up her brother, but uh, she was really inspired. She wanted to really thank the speakers, and I, uh, but given all the talk about educating the next generation, we appreciate hearing that. <laughs> and she works at a retirement home in the summer to make money and she put out a box there and got all the retirees to donate to the Sakupa Workers Fund. Oh, yes. wow. <laughs> and one other thing I want to say is um, I did travel up to uh, Burlington, I guess it was about a week and a half ago, and I met Ramon and his wife Deanna, wherever she went. <laughs> and, uh, um, I think one of the things I was very impressed about is that you have a very democratic 
traffic organization. Um, and all the negotiations, everyone's involved and knows exactly what's going on. And uh, so what struck me is um, what Gary said about the need for democratic unions. <laughs> became so evident because in a time when many strikes are not, are failing, you're winning. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's yeah. really yeah. 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 Anyway, um, we're, we're very proud of you, we're very inspired by you, and um, I think it's a wonderful connection with the history of what the Civil Rights Movement started. And black, brown, and white together workers are going to take this forward and thank you very much all of you. Can I interject? So, um, thank you for the ladies who commented on um, when I was speaking. Uh, and one of the things that I want to encourage everybody to remember is that um, even if you don't have children, you see children in your neighborhood, educate them. Talk to them. Spend time with them. Uh, because you don't know what's going on in their home. They may have a parent who is under as much uh, uh, labor distress as any of the rest of us. And so, you know, um, my goal is to always um, see about children from a, uh, a labor perspective, but also from an educational perspective. But I think if, you know, we remember that it takes a village to raise a child we are the village that will be um, highly rewarded if we do it right, mm -hmm. right? We have to educate them about labor. We have to educate them about where they came from. We have to educate them about where they are and where they are going. Because a lot of our children today, all this gay violence and different things that's going on is because nobody took the time to educate them about their past, their present, or their future. So let's inspire them all the more. And thank you for all those people in the communities who do that already. Um, I want to come back to the woman in the green. Oh, I thought you had your hand up, Becca. <laughs> okay. Chaz. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, well, first of all, I appreciate it. Um, highlighting the fact that to get a true history, you really need to find yourself or uh, you know, go to people that know in your community. Because I remember the McGraw Hill books. And when I was in high school, I got a good public education, but it wasn't the right stuff. And so I really like that. And I didn't actually embrace or care about history until I developed my own political orientation. Absolutely. Which made more sense to the world. So I just wanted to say that. And another thing about uh, charter schools, I think, is that it takes accountability out of um, a way, and it also um, takes away democracy from the community because you have this charter that's imposed. And it's also, um, you know, so the community needs to be involved in what the curriculum is, so all students' educational needs are met. Yes. And, uh, but yeah, when you have a charter that's imposed, and it's also anti worker because the teachers are paid less and right. they're paid by unions, so yeah. there's that too. Yeah, right. Hold on, I'll come back to you. Oh. I want to ask um, how the children in this camp are learning. Are they getting Pues ahorita lo que pueden donar, uh, si es cierto, son libros, lapiceras, algo que ayude, porque uh, están en la escuela de verano. It's so, uh, yes, people can definitely donate books, pencils, things like that. They are going to summer school. Uh, queremos la clínica CIMAR, nos está ayudando a ver si pueden poner programas para, que, para poder los niños, para mantener los niños aprendiendo algo. And also, we're, we're uh, trying to work with the CIMAR clinic programs, it's a great program so to, to keep the kids learning something. So. Pero es la mejor ayuda que pueden dar, libros, libros, cuadernos, and But the yeah, best thing that, that you could all do is helping us with things like books, notebooks, pens, things like that. Gracias. And thank you. Okay, I have the woman in the purple, shining. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, my name is uh, Christina. I'm, 
I ran for uh, vice president last year. what their concerns was, and a lot of people are concerned about the economy and the debt and all that stuff, but I couldn't help thinking that uh, of Martin Luther King's vision, um, he saw the way to race liberation as an economic fight also, and that's why he supported the, the Memphis sanitation worker struggle there in Tennessee, and I think that's what we gotta get back to now because things are really going backwards, yeah. and it's because the rich have all the money and power to fund their foundations who go and lobby our elected elected officials yeah. to put laws that make it easier to close down public schools, put people in prison longer, make, uh, make it these high stakes uh, testing. They do that, but we have something that they don't. We have people that do the work, that actually create the wealth. And that's why we are powerful. We come together and start supporting each other. Yeah. They they cannot they can use all their money and influence, but we're gonna have, we're gonna have the real power when we turn things around. And that's why I'm so glad that people are supporting the farm workers in, in Bellingham there or in uh, Skagit Valley, yeah. because you know the berries that you get for thirty cents an hour. They're selling those berries at astronomical five dollars yeah, for a little bit. Yeah. 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 For the farmers to get thirty cents, and then they pay other farm workers uh, uh, twelve dollars an hour. You know they pay prison laborers twenty dollars an hour. They, the prisoners don't get it. The prisoners themselves don't get the money. Twenty dollars an hour to pick produce in this state of Washington. They pay prisoners twenty dollars an hour. A lot of it didn't go to the prisoners. They went to the agency that facilitated. It went to the correctional agency. That is a crime. To me, that tells me that they can pay you and all your co-workers $20 an hour and still make the money. Yeah. Here. <laughs> Immigration reform, I do not like what was passed and what was touted because it is it, it really encourages guest worker programs. And that only divides workers. I, your 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 story about what they're how they were treated differently and yes it is discrimination. They put that guest worker so they can divide it, the workers when they shouldn't be divided. So that's why we oppose guest worker bills and in my campaign. But we also work for opening the borders because anyone should have should have the right to go anywhere in this earth to earn a living and to best uh, as a means of survival. They've been doing that since human. Uh, evolved into this planet. That's why we got so many Europeans in this country. <laughs> 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 okay, I know pe people have a lot of great t things to say. I want to say let's let's hold the clapping until the end because I d have a bunch of people who have something to say now. So let's go ahead with the guy in the blue. No, no, no. Go ahead. My name is Flynn Kirkano from Portland, Oregon. Thank you all the speakers for inspiring me. Okay, I think I want to talk to you about the control of our unions and also about the civil rights. I had to get approached by two people saying, you're a your union, your CW, you're fighting by fight, rejoin the AFL-CIO. I did not know about this. I was responding to that. We were voting for Frank McFarlane. Oh, wow. What's going on? And also, my union does not want to get involved in social justice movements. But they could make a tremendous impact. They said they'll make donations to the uh, different leukemia, or right now they got the possibly there's a swab, like a cheek to see if you can be part of a donor bank or a bone donor. That's like internationally. So I talked to him about uh, getting involved in the Trevor Martin case to the public stand. Oh no, that's a, that, that's, that a, this is a that we call more conservative arms that are even upset, so we can't do that. We need more democracy and unions where we have more control relationships with more military. The other thing that is because of military rights, uh, it was excluded from the 1963 Civil Rights Act because they're afraid that it might cause more hazards. You can't wait for terrorism. Well, look, at, look at today. The 
got people who are they're hiring people for the low wages, low wages. Something is wrong with that. When young people are talking about disability rights, who are afraid of reaching out to people who are immigrants, and not talking about this because they're afraid that they might be their job, and some people together is more powerful. So I think we also need to do this because it's rights as well. Thanks. I have the woman in the back. Yeah. Thank you. Right. I'm going to call on, on Ted, one of the organizers for the local um, march and celebration here. Go ahead, Ted. I know you don't see me. <laughs> uh, my name is Ted Thomas. <laughs> okay. My name is Ted Thomas. Jackie and Kevin and many others. We are representatives of the Puget Sound Chapter of the Coalition of Black Trade Unions. <laughs> now, I've lived in the 9-8 on one eight for 18 years. It's the first time I've ever stepped in this building. Somebody should tell me I have meetings like this all the time. <laughs> now you know. We expect to see you back now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so our event that we are doing here in Seattle, we're going to do a lot of what they did in 63, but we're going to do a lot of what's going on here in our own backyard. We are bringing together individuals like Annalisa to speak, okay? And I'm hoping that you understood my writing, because I want you and an interpreter there. I want a lot of people to hear what you got to say. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. My wife is 775. Right? And so I understand exactly what you're saying. Because she's gone around the country doing work for, for SEIU. But again, she can't vote on anything in her own union. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, she's a handicapped worker. She has five miles of real bad. She shouldn't be working. So the state does not recognize her as being handicapped. They only give her a, a right to park in the handicapped spot. Oh, 
okay? Because no way to come about. So she has to work. So anyways, there are topics that we're going to be covering. So I'm going to be familiar with individuals. Mr. Gary Parker, he will be speaking on some of the issues. Pastor Willis from True Vine, he will be speaking on issues. There is uh, the camp, Ms. Anna Lisa. There's also the uh, group here in Oakley that is supporting the trade bond. Who will also be speaking at the event. Many, many veterans and pastors and other individuals will be speaking at this event. Receive. And looking at the communication and looking at and hearing individuals, I've got more response on my end from community than I have from labor. I am labor. I've been labor since 98. My own unit has not stepped up yet. And our general meeting comes up Wednesday. Not going to be a good day for them. <laughs> part of the Electrical Workers Minority Caucus. Along with the Electrical Workers Minority Caucus, I'm part of Fast Jobs Coalition. And I support many other entities, but I'm also a delegate to the Martin Luther King County Labor Council and its newly reformed diversity committee. So, through my years, you know, when I was younger, I used to just go around beating up bullies because I had the size to be able to do that. When I became a grown man, then it became, I've got kids and I've got grandkids, and now my fight has turned different. My fight has turned into helping individuals who have a hard time helping themselves, don't know how to help themselves, or won't help themselves. So, individuals like you, don't oh, please show up. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Because, see, you're part of my community also. There's a lot of people around here that's dealing with a lot of situations. And it's not just a color thing anymore. It's a unified situation that's tearing this community apart, tearing this city apart, tearing the beaches apart. And to be quite honest with you, I grew up poor. I'm glad I'm going to die poor. But what matters to me is the whole picture. So, speaking for the city to you, we're all in. And if anybody wants to help the CBTU to combat, I've been saying for a long time, CBTU is coming out the closet, coming out the dark. And if AFL, CIO, I heard a lot going on about that, they, they don't know what's coming at in 2014. Mm. 2014, I, I skipped all conventions this year based around this one event. 2014, I'm going to all events. I'm going to every last convention there is. And when I do, I'm going to call them on their bullshit. And even though you're saying your union isn't stuck behind you, you're the example of the type of radical leadership, labor leadership that we all need to see and be. So thank you. I have the guy right in front of you. Go ahead. Fred. <laughs>
the day that I sort of actually died in Washington the day. It wasn't even on election day that the initiative began to pass. It was on the floor of the State Labor Council convention mm. for a local 304 resolution calling for a, a, a main major fight to defend affirmative action, funding the labor law organizing in Washington to educate. That was turned down because they didn't want to scare voters away from voting for Patty Murray. Mm. Ah, Patty Murray won by 200,000 votes. Wow. Turned the national lost by 200,000 votes. Yeah. So they've been out there fighting just as hard for the national as they did for Patty Murray until it happened in the state. Do you want to respond to that? You know what? Um, I keep saying I'm like a broken record. I talk about orientation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a child of affirmative action. Yeah. Uh, I think about, when I think about my father, who, who, who didn't get a chance to go to college, affirmative action offered me an opportunity of an Ivy League education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I'm thankful for, grateful for. And, but that affirmative action, that orientation, that somebody's getting something, mm -hmm. it's like that quote, from JF, I mean from LBJ. You, you have affirmative, anti-affirmative action, that whole thing about you know, preference, especially when there's affirmative action for alumni, sons and daughters, mm -hmm. affirmative action for athletes, That's right. for musicians and other people. The only ones that they found some fault in, you know, uh, you know there's an old saying that you know, if you're white, you're all right. If you're brown, stick around. If you're black, go back. Mm -hmm. and now, that was, affirmative action was placed, was put in that kind of context. And that's orientation that in the state of Washington, where African Americans make up five to eight percent, you figure that's a big enough threat to make an initiative against it. Mm -hmm. There wasn't that many contracts anyway. And that orientation from the Washington State Labor Council, which I'll have to call out because they've passed resolutions that have not been enforced. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that orientation and that failure to, you know, put your money where your mouth is, turn things around, and now we're really suffering the consequences because of it. All, all the only thing I would say is. Uh, we have an activist in this town by the name of Eddie Rye, and there's other people who have been in this town for a long time that have spoke up on, you know, jobs, trade, equity. Uh, Ted mentioned the fast jobs. Uh, that kind of stuff uh, is the aftermath of that, you know, I, I 200, I 300, whatever it is, and so that's that orientation that. It's still prevalent. We have to overcome that. Otherwise, we're going to sink further into the abyss. Mm. Okay. I have three more people I want to call on, and then I'll invite the speakers to have some closing comments. Um, go ahead. Jordana. <laughs> yes, I'm looking at you. Purple. Um, my name is Jordana. I'm Yeah. 
Portland, um, which carry a lot of influence and a lot of control, um, labor has come very late onto the game. Um, the AFL, the Oregon AFL-CIO has endorsed, IBEW actually, the Local 48 has endorsed, but that is because of the organizing of a very strong black woman in that union. Um, but one of the concerns that, in, in thinking about this whole question about orientation, is where this particular march on Washington organizing is really going. And one of the things that came to our attention was that the group of ministers, the Alpha Minister um, Alliance, um, basically threw out to corporations to please bankroll this march. Mm -hmm. And one of the corporations that was willing to oblige is Wells Fargo. Ooh. So Wells Fargo, which everyone, everyone in the room knows, has a vested interest in privatized prisons, um, uh, has been part of some other really dastardly thing that slips my mind at the moment. But anyway, so part of the orientation is not only do we need to stop uh, pouring money into the Democratic Party, but we need to make a split a very to, to, to find the line between working people and the program of working people yeah. and the program of big business. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Stephen in the back. I'm from uh, New York City and I ran with Ben on the presidential ticket with Christina. And uh, the one in Washington, the one in Washington D.C. <laughs> it seems like Al Sharpton has not all the buses to serve. I have to pay fifty-five dollars, which is a lot of money. Wow. But anyway, we we're all going. I think we're mobilizing to go. Um, uh, you know, there, there is a lot of Kool-Aid out there. A lot of people are drinking it. Mm -hmm. you know, behind the Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid is Wall Street. Yeah. And you know, we really understand, you have to understand there's an opposing class that's out to get us out, do us out, do us in. And not just by locking people up in largest numbers ever in human history, I mean, you know, but that they really have to do us all in. And when it comes to uh, when it comes to the privatization of education, charter schools, there's a thing that's happening in Harlem, Harlem, where the Freedom Socialist Party has a storefront for the last 12 years. Uh, it's really been ground zero for this national charter school movement, and it's right together. Not only the privatization of education are they can make profit off of education, but it's right together with the developers in the city of New York, where now, just a few blocks from Freedom Hall, they built a multi-million dollar charter school in the middle of a housing project. Mm. Only five people, students from that housing project, have committed to the charter school. So what's the future? The future is they will privatize the housing, the public housing. They will sell the public housing with the, on the basis of the school, and with that they'll continue to push people out. Wow. So this is what we're really up against. We're up against we're up against Wall Street, we're up against people that funded Obama. You know, we're up against that Obama. I, I, my other comment I just want to make is I'm glad that Jerry talked about McKinney's and and, um, and states' rights. Because that's what it comes down to with the trick standard gun, standard standard Florida. That's what it comes down to with gay rights. Mm -hmm. You know, the big through all that, the, 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 he said it was only going to make it a federal sense. And then also what happened with the overturning the uh, the Voting Rights Act. I mean, that was one thing. It was a mass movement in this country that made the federal government change. And now, 30 years later, the, Fed, the Supreme Court is saying, well, it's a question of states in Texas, really. Other places than New York City. This, this isn't just the South. There were many. There were many districts in New York City where um, the federal government had to approve every change in electoral laws. But that is that is totally reactionary. And this whole country and this institution of slavery was based on the concept of states' rights, and that's what gave that's what that's what made slavery be a part of the founding of this country. Yeah. Thank you. And so with that, I want to invite our speakers, if you had any closing comments that you wanted to say after hearing from the audience. Um, 
I'd say, go ahead. Nomás quería decir muchas gracias por las donaciones. I just want to thank you all very much for the donations. Con estas donaciones ustedes nos están dando fuerza para seguir luchando contra esta gente que piensa que somos esclavos. And with these donations, you're helping giving, helping us get strength to keep fighting against these people who think we're just slaves. And nosotros, gracias a ustedes, vamos a tratar de mostrarle a todo este estado que no somos esclavos de nadie. No merecemos ser esclavos de los ricos. And we're, with your help, we're going to try to uh, show the entire state that we're not slaves and we, we don't deserve to be treated as slaves of the rich. Todos necesitamos ser tratados como personas. That we all deserve to be treated like people. Y muchas gracias por sus donaciones. So thank you very much for the donations. Go ahead. Well, I hope that uh, after the march, uh, on Saturday, next Saturday, which I'm sure you're all going to be at, that we can go on organizing. That's what I really hope. Not that it's just a one day event. Maybe we can get together again, call another evening event, and all sit down and talk about how we can, how we can go forward and not just, not just tonight and not just next Saturday. So, the only thing I can really think to say is don't mourn, organize. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and um, I'm thankful uh, for the opportunity to be here to speak. And we talk about organization. I know I talk about orientation, but organization. and. A. Philip Randolph said this in 1925. And uh, whenever I read it or hear it, it always does something for me. Uh, he said a lot of things, but this is what he said. And may we all be encouraged by it. Uh, at the banquet table of life, there are no reserved seats. You can get what you can take, and you can keep what you can hold. If you can't take anything, you won't get anything. And if you can't hold anything, you won't keep anything. But you can't take anything without organization. So let's organize.